Hello everyone. From trading to ruling. Vasco da Gama. The arrival of three ships under Vasco da Gama led by a Gujarati pilot named Abdul Majid at Calicut in May 1498 profoundly affected the course of Indian history. The Hindu ruler of Calicut, the Zamor in Samutri, however, had no applications as to the Europeans' in intentions. As the prosperity of his kingdom was to due to Calicut's position as an entry port, he accorded a friendly reception to Vasco da Gama. The Arab traders who had good business with on the Malabar coast were apprehensive and were not keen on the Portuguese getting a hold there. For centuries, the trading system in the Indian Ocean has had numerous participants, Indians, Arabs, Africans from the East Coast, Chinese, Javanese among others, but these participants had acted according to some tacit rules of conduct and none had sought overwhelming, overwhelming dominance though all were in it for profit. The Portuguese changed that. They wanted to monopolize the hugely profitable eastern trade by excluding competitors, especially the Arabs. Vasco da Gama stayed in India for three months. When he returned to Portugal, he carried back with him a rich cargo and sold the merchandise in the European market at a huge profit. The importance of direct access to the pepper trade was made clear by the fact that elsewhere the Europeans who had to buy through Muslim middlemen would have had to spend 10 times as much for the same amount of pepper. Not surprisingly, other profit-seeking merchants of European nations were tempted to come to India and trade directly. A voyage was undertaken by Pedro Alvarez Cabral to trade for spices. He negotiated and established a factory at Calicut where he arrived in September 1500. There was an incident of conflict when the Portuguese factory at Calicut was attacked by the locals resulting in the death of several Portuguese. In retaliation, Cabral seized a number of Arab merchant ships anchored in the harbour and killed hundreds of their crew besides confiscating their cargo and burning the ships. Calicut was bombarded by Cabral. Later, Cabral succeeded in making advantageous treaties with the local rulers of Cochin and Kananur. Vasco da Gama once again came to India in 1501. The Zamorin declined to exclude the Arab merchants in favour of the Portuguese when Vasco da Gama combined commercial greed with ferocious hostility and wreaked vengeance on Arab shipping wherever he could. His rupture with the Zamorin thus became total and complete. Vasco da Gama set up a trading facility at Kananur. Gradually, Calicut, Kananur and Cochin became the important trade centres of the Portuguese. Gradually, under the pretext of protecting the factories and their trading activities, Portuguese got permission to fortify these centers. Francisco de Almeida. In 1505, the King of Portugal appointed a governor in India for a three year term and equipped the incumbent with sufficient force to protect the Portuguese interests. Francisco de Almeida, the newly appointed governor, was asked to consolidate the position of the Portuguese in India and to destroy Muslim trade by seizing Aden, or Ormuz, and Malacca. He was also advised to build fortresses at Ancha Diva, Cochin, Kananur, and Kilwa. What Almeida, however, encountered, along with the opposition of the Jamarin, was a threat from the Mameluke Sultan of Egypt. Encouraged by the merchants of Venice, whose lucrative commerce was now at risk due to the Portuguese interference, the Egyptians raised a fleet in the Red Sea to stop the advance of the Portuguese. In 1507, the Portuguese squadron was defeated in a naval battle of Dayu by the combined Egyptian and Gujarat navies and Almeida's son was killed. Next year, Almeida avenged his 
defeat by totally crushing the two navies. Almeida's vision was to make the Portuguese the master of Indian Ocean. His policy was known as the Blue Water Policy, Cartes system. Alfonso de Albuquerque. Albuquerque, who succeeded Almeida as the Portuguese governor in India, was the real founder of the Portuguese power in the East, a task he completed before his death. He secured for Portugal the strategic control of the Indian Ocean by establishing bases overlooking all the entrances to the sea. The, there were Portuguese strongholds in East Africa, off the Red Sea, at Ormos, in Malabar and Al- Malacca. The Portuguese under Albuquerque bolstered their strang- stranglehold by introducing a permit system for other sh- ships and exercising control over the major shipbuilding centers in the region. The non-availability of timber in the Gulf and Red Sea regions for shipbuilding also helped the Portuguese in their objectives. Albuquerque acquired Goa from the Sultan of Bijapur in 1510 with ease. The principal port of the Sultan of Bijapur became the first bit of Indian territory to be under the Europeans since the time of Alexander the Great. An interesting feature of his rule was the abolition of Sati. The Portuguese men who had come on voyages and stayed back in India were from Albuquerque's day encouraged to take local wives. In Goa and the province of the north, they established themselves as village landlords often building new roads and irrigation works, introducing new crops like tobacco and cashew nut, or better plantation varieties of coconut besides planting large groves of coconut to meet the need for coir rigging and cordage. In the cities such as Goa and Cochin, they settled as artisans and master craftsmen besides being traders. Most of such Portuguese came to look upon their new settlements rather than Portugal as home. Nino da Canha Nino da Canha assumed the office of the governor of Portuguese interest in India in November 1529 and almost one year later shifted the headquarters of the Portuguese government in India from Cochin to Goa. Bahadur Shah of Gujarat during his conflict with the Mughal Emperor Himayun secured help from the Portuguese by ceding to them in 1534 the island of Basin with its dependencies and revenues. He also promised them a base in Dayu. However, Bagdus Ra's relations with the Portuguese became sore when Humayun withdrew from Gujarat in 1536. Since the inhabitants of the town started fighting with the Portuguese, Bagdus Ra wanted to raise a wall of partition. Opposing this, the Portuguese started negotiations in the course of which the, the Ruler of Gujarat was invited to a Portuguese ship and killed in 1537. Dakanha who also attempted to increase Portuguese influence in Bengal by settling many Portuguese nationals there with Hooghly as their headquarters. Thank you. Bye.